I wanted to update, give you an update on my Dark Knight of the Soul because it's been two years now since I made the last video on the Dark Knight and I wanted to share the five main lessons that I can see now looking back with some perspective because it's been some time now. I expect myself to go through difficult times in the future as well, but this Dark Knight has been one of the most difficult things I've gone through in my life up to this point. And it lasted from... The main period was from 2014, I think, to 2017, maybe. And then there was a few years of just coming out of it, coming back online, becoming <laughs> a human being again. And so that took another few years. So I made the previous video in 2018, which was when I was just starting to come out of it. And you can see in that video that there's, or maybe you can't see, but I can see and feel myself under a heavy kind of a blanket. There's still like a residual sadness and heaviness there because I'd gone through so much that I was mentally and physically exhausted. So the five main lessons, let's start with the first one and it's learning about difficult emotions and thoughts and really seeing that we live in a virtual reality of our own making. Not that we create it consciously in every moment, but we never feel the world out there. We feel our thoughts and emotions and our thoughts and emotions act as middlemen to the world. So when I felt down, when I felt totally meaningless, when everything felt meaningless, there was the tendency to also see the world as meaningless because I project out what I feel inside. So if I'm angry, everything in the world seems like a problem or everyone is against me. When I feel depressed, there's nothing interesting in the world. I just want to escape and just go away. And so lesson one was about learning to face my inner demons, my thoughts, emotions, and learning that they're nothing to be afraid of. Even though I might have been scared of things like being homeless, not being loved, and dying alone, and all, all these kinds of thoughts and emotions that I've learned as I've grown up and probably things that been has been that have been passed down to me from previous generations and I just don't know where where they all come from. So all this stuff I got to face because it became so much and I didn't want to run away from it. I knew that if I didn't face my inner demons that they would just haunt me for the rest of my life. I didn't want to give in to excessive coping strategies like drugs and food. And I was lucky in that because there was something within, within me that said that that's not going to help me. And I didn't want to opt out out of life because I knew that there's something here. There's a potential even in the darkness to see something that leads to my growth and leads to me being able to help others because we all go through things like this. Even if you're not going through the dark night, you may have, you may go through difficult times in life. So that's the first lesson. The second one is to pay attention because even in the deepest darkness, there were little things that life brought to me. Sentences that came out of a video, a book, just random things happening that nudged me or inspired me to look 
in a certain direction, to pick up a book, to watch a video, to make a, do, a, do an online search, and then finding something that was truly helpful to me. And then also to pay attention to things that made me light up inside, that somehow resonated with me, like reading an article online and seeing a sentence about something that in a sense gave me hope or strength to hold on, to keep going. And then also to pay attention to the fact that these times are about slowing down and I really didn't want to slow down in the early days. The early, first year was really difficult because I was struggling with so many things that were crumbling within me, so many beliefs and concepts that no longer were helpful to me. And so I almost felt like, felt like I was dying, but what was happening was that the inter my internal world was falling apart, and since I, I identified or got my sense of self out of that conceptual reality, I felt like I was dying, but it was just something, a layer of me that was disappearing. So learning to slow down, learning to pay attention to what I feel drawn to do. And I didn't always succeed at this because I guess I'm stubborn and it takes time for me to learn, but that's how it goes sometimes. And just paying attention to feeling drawn to take a walk, read a book, listen to something or someone, and giving yourself a break to just sometimes relax, watch a movie, do something that's not productive. So that's lesson two. Lesson three was the art of holding on because sometimes all I could do during the deepest, darkest moments was hold on. I couldn't use positivity or bring positive thoughts that would change my mental state. I couldn't do that because it was like I couldn't believe my own thoughts, which is funny because at the same time I believed that life was meaningless and hopeless, yet I couldn't be believe anything else. So all I could do was hold on because I was too exhausted to try to pretend to be positive. So I embraced the darkness, at least after a while. It felt like there was no way out. It's like you were dropped in a hole and there's only one way you can go. There's a tunnel deep, there's a dark tunnel that moves forward, forward and you're afraid to go there because you don't know what's there. Maybe you hear some scary noises. You don't want to go, but eventually you need food, you need water, and there's no other way to go but forward. So you begin to walk and you begin to discover that, yes, it may be scary, but you can ride it out. So I learned to hold on and I learned eventually to break free from all these concepts of life, is me life has meaning, life doesn't have meaning, it should be this or that. And seeing through all that, the art of holding on to seeing that, seeing that you don't always have to be positive. It's okay to be sad, to be down. It's okay to ask for help. To even find people online or offline that are in a similar situation or have been through what I'm going through, what you're going through. And eventually you learn to ride it out because it's kind of like a storm. Let's say you move to a new planet and you don't know the climate, you don't know what's going on. So you begin building your house, but there's, there comes a storm every few months and the first one tears down your house 
and you're out in the cold and you barely survive. But the next time you're a bit stronger, you build your house again, it breaks again, but this time you're prepared. And then it keeps happening until eventually you can build a house that's strong enough, rooted deeply enough into the ground. And so you have grounding to stand on. You begin to know yourself, to trust yourself, to trust life. Even if there are storms that are pushing against you, those storms make you stronger and you learn the arts of holding on until you can begin to flourish, to grow, to share, to live life again. So lesson three, holding on. Lesson four, surrender. Because during this time I had to learn what wasn't mine to control, which was almost everything. I couldn't control the world. I didn't feel like I could, could control my inner thoughts or emotions. So I had to learn to surrender, to give up that control. And it took me a few years, but eventually I did manage to surrender, at least in some way. And it led to a tremendous amount of freedom because before the dark night I tried to control many different things and now there's le much less control much much less now st I still control just ask my family I still have my quirks my things I do but they're melting away I don't think I will ever let all of them go because I'm still human, but a lot of it disappeared during the dark night because it became so intense in certain moments that I had to surrender. There was no other way out than to let go. And in letting go, I began trusting life even more. I talk about following your heart and your passion and your interests and I've been doing this since 2002, just following my interests. But the dark night turned things up to another level, kind of like if you're playing a video game and first you play on easy, then normal, and suddenly it gets cranked up to insane. That's what it felt like, but I'm thankful now looking back at it, which is a bit cliche to say, to say that I'm thankful, but it gave me so much experience in so little time that there was so much growth, so much potential to be tapped into, and I was lucky to tap, tap into some of that potential. Because life is challenging. It's not always happiness, always rainbows, unicorns with candy bags. But there's a certain, what's the word? There's a certain, could you say love? in the sadness or maybe preciousness in the sadness because the sadness and the emotions we call negative are also a part of being human it's not until you embrace your whole humanity that you become whole and that leads me to the last lesson which is compassion and connection because When you embrace yourself, you be begin to embrace others. And when I was felt the worst during this time, I understood that I understood why people would take drugs, why 
we have coping mechanisms like why people eat to numb their feelings why they exercise to numb their feelings eat drink sleep take drugs or even want to stop living and that's something else i got to experience the it's the suicidal thoughts suicidal ideation and again i was fortunate enough to be able to see that suicidal thoughts were a symptom of wanting to escape pain in the moment it's not that i had to believe them and act on them instead it's kind of a an alarm bell that tells you that you're in a lot of pain right now to either change what you're doing or find someone to talk to or seek professional help because our thoughts and emotions communicate with us they are teachers in a way when we feel completely down we can't really trust our thinking because it's often so absurd and so negative that it's trying to find a way out even our darkest thoughts are trying to help us even thoughts that say that we need to get this to stop we need to end this but not to believe those thoughts instead to take it as a symptom of the pain you're in and so during this time the first year or two i was in a lot of pain just being in the darkness and wondering why this was happening to me and eventually i started realizing that i wasn't going to get out of this until i embraced all of it and i be began embracing the feelings the emotions i began opening up to them and i began seeing that as human beings we're all in the same boat it doesn't matter where we come from what we lo look like we are all animated by this life force whatever you want to call it god life the universe energy we all have our different struggles but we all experience this yin and yang of good and bad the success and struggle happiness and sadness and we don't have to run away from any of it and in this there's connection to others because even during these times when i felt like i'm alone there's no one that understands me there were thousands if not tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of people going through the same thing and we all understand each other so there are people out there that understand that may even be able to help but ultimately 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 for me I had to be willing to help myself and to be willing to face my own demons. So let's sum this up. I would say to myself going through this to myself beginning to go through this that you will get through this. Just hold on. Do the best you can. Eat a pizza here and there, watch some movies. It may just take time because you are being deconstructed by life for some reason. And now after this I would say it was for a very good reason I'm happy I went through this and it has the potential to be a gift a learning opportunity because you're put under so much stress that you're able to grow so much sometimes what comes to mind is that I got to grow in a compressed way meaning that I got to grow more than I probably would have grown in my whole during my whole lifetime because of this intense pressure and stress stress and deconstruction so those were the five lessons I hope this has been helpful I'll see you in the next one